In today's Quick Thursday tip, we're gonna talk about how to add page breaks to your PDFs when you create them with Power Apps and Power Automate. All right, one of the th people love to do, one of my favorite things to do, is to create PDFs using Flow, but when you do that, one of the challenges is how do I get a page break? So we're gonna finally tell you how to do that in this quick little video. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today, we're gonna talk about how to add page breaks in your PDFs. So this is one of those challenges, right? For a long time, we've had the content out there around how to create PDF files, but one of the things that came up for a long time also was how do I get page breaks in there? Because if when you convert the content, basically the conversion process just shoves page breaks wherever it wants. So I finally figured it out and I figured it out well enough that I feel comfortable showing you, which has been really the challenge for a long time. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on my desktop, remember way back when we made this video here, right? And this one was the first one we ever did to make a simple PDF. And then we did a more complex one over here where we went in and we built all these, right? And it spit out some really cool PDFs for us along the way, like this one right here. And so we're like, yay, PDF. And you know, that was great. That was what we wanted. But one of the most popular questions was how do I get those page breaks in there? So. What we did was I went looking and there's a lot of different HTML concepts for doing page breaks, but unfortunately the conversion process ignores all of them. It's like, oh, you want to do this page break method here? Nah, nah, nah. So what I figured out though was that one of the things it does not ignore is right here. It does not ignore what is called a div, right? So div tags are ways to build sections of content. And so what I figured out was that if you built a div that took up an entire page or entire page worth of information, if you build that div, that would then define your page. So here you can see that I've got a div. This whole ID page equals one, that is meaningless. That was just an ID I had in there, so I knew what div it was. Style though, right here's what you're after. I set it to a height of 770 pixels and a width of 535 pixels. And so then you can see I start my page with a div, then I have whatever content I want, and I close the div. So that is how I define a page. I just divide, de, defined it as an giant, geez, old pizza, I can't talk. I'm like so worried about teaching you guys this. But that is how you make it. So then the second page just starts with the same type of thing. I declare another div, and I put the content in there. And so if we test this, and remember, if you're not familiar with how to build a PDF, you know, there's other videos for that. I'll link to those, I don't know, somewhere. I probably already linked to them, whatever. I'll make sure you get those ones because I'm assuming you understand how to build PDFs with Power Apps and Power Automate. All I'm trying to show you is that now, if we go over here and click on a little refresh and then click on our PDF, we're going to see that I have page one and then page two. Now, you notice here that I set the background colors. Background colors are going to help you as you try to figure this out. And then once you're done with them, you just get rid of them. But by doing this, I can say, look, that div is actually this big yellow box. And then the text is just everything that's going over top of that div. That's how this really works, right? And then page two was a big red box. And this is a lot of how I troubleshot. Because one of the challenges you're gonna run into is that while I make this look super simple, I can tell you that these heights, I mean, mostly it's the height, I have to I have to play with it on different apps, right? It, it seems to kind of vary based on what type of content you have inside it, how that content is laid out. So don't just think that it's always gonna be 760 or 770 by 535. In reality, you have to adjust these numbers a little bit. And so while you're lining things up, so while you're building it out, you're gonna to wanna to use that. Uh, method, right? You're going to want to set the color, but then we'll just get rid of the color when it's all said and done. Also, keep in mind, you're thinking, all right, well, Shane, that's awesome, right? So this is how we do page breaks, but I need mine to be more dynamic, right? No big deal. Now that you understand the HTML, we know that most of the time, what do I do? It's over back over in Power Apps. I'm doing things like, um, if we go here, you know, I'm using things like concat, right, to loop through it. And so, in your concat then, you would just need to figure out where does the div uh, type of stuff work out. And so that can be very complex. We have customer apps that we build really weird, hard things for, and it might take me four or five hours to figure out how to do exactly what I need to do here. But, but all the pieces are here and it all works when you figure out all the math for getting all the divs in the right places based on like the number of rows in your table and things like that. It's, it's all possible, it's just a lot harder. So my main goal here was to get you guys comfortable with the idea 
that you, oh, not that one, that you just want to use divs. And I saw someone like reference something. I wish I knew who I'd seen kind of like point me in this direction. They didn't give me the answer, but they kind of gave me this idea. So this was inspired off of someone's post somewhere or when it posted, it was like a Twitter comment or something. So I was like, oh, I think divs might work. And I was like, oh, and then years later they do. Okay, so the other little piece of this I want to talk about for a second as we go back over here. And so I just want to show you this, right? Because this is the, the PDF that we built in my advanced class. You know, we spent a lot of time. And so this is just to kind of get your heads wrapped around the idea that, look, we can do a lot of cool stuff, right? Here's tables with multiple row, uh, row spanning, column spanning, background colors. I put a background image here, um, you know, so different heights. This one is a dynamic stack we used to build like a, a visual one time for a customer. And then down here are some of the different pieces. So, oh, and then there's a prettier one, right? But I, I did this, um, you can see here that I just used like a red or a yellow and a white pattern to make sure that I understood where everything fell. And that was really what helped me kind of lay this out. So this is something we build in the advanced class. We're not gonna get into all of these concepts, but I thought it was a quick little reminder that it does a lot of neat things. So, so there you go. Right now you know my secrets around how divs let you do page breaks when you're using the free free uh, PDF conversion tool. Also remember there's a lot of great partners out there that do PDF conversions. So if you're really struggling with this, it might behoove you to go spend a few bucks with one of those third party providers and you know have Power Automate send the data to them because their conversion processes are a lot smoother than the, the free one that is based on our friend, um, you know, convert file using path, right? This one, this one's a little, little, little grumpy, so. so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tip. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Remember, the number one problem that people have when like, my HTML is not working is because you're missing a tag. You didn't close something, you have a typo. The conversion process is very grumpy. So you know, you're know, you happy to try and help you down there, but a lot of times my answer is gonna be just go back through your HTML line by line and find the answer because it's gonna be a little typo is usually your biggest problem. We, we do, uh, PDFs for customers at least once a week. Uh, you know, some of them we do in an hour. Some of them take 40 hours to build. So there's a lot you can do here if you want. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.